Last year I turned 40 and these are things that I would not do again in my 20s and 30s. I would not get married. I met my husband when I was 24 and we got married when I was 29. At the time, I thought that this was like the ideal situation. I'm at the perfect age to get married. But what I realized was in the four years that we were married, I grew so much as a person. I graduated from business school, started my own business. I just became such a different person that I didn't feel like he was the best fit for me anymore. And I don't think I could have realized that at 29 when I said yes. If I could do it again, I would have allowed myself to have so much more growth in my life before I made a decision on a life partner. And it's really nothing against that partner specifically, but it was more about the direction that I wanted my life to take. My interests by 35 were unrecognizable to my younger self. And I don't think it would have been fair for me to take him on this journey if I didn't think that he was the right partner for the version of me that was to come. So, <laughs> so, um, interesting video I saw going viral. Y'all heard what she said, just like I did. And I don't know if those of y'all who saw this also saw the hate train that followed for this woman. I mean, I know her DMs and comments is just in shambles. But what I saw was tons of both men and women, but mostly men saying, you know, this is why men don't need to get married. There ain't no incentive. Um, just imagine if one guy said, just imagine if you provided a life for this woman and then she woke up one day and just decided that she outgrew you. And other people were saying stuff like, well, you know, she just came up and decided her man wasn't good enough for her no more. I'm going to be real with y'all. That's not necessarily what I got. Could it be true? Sure. But what I got from her is exactly what she said. She grew, she changed, and she realized the person that she was with could only love her in one season of her life or one version of her. And therefore, the relationship couldn't work. They had to make a hard decision. But she reminds me of a lot of women who, and those of y'all who have been in a long-term relationship, married or not, you probably can relate but they were in a relationship at a very young age. They learned, they grew, they, they found out what fulfillment and their purpose was and how happiness needs to look for them. They developed confidence to stand for these different things and they realized that the person that they were with were not able to, was not able to grow with them or even worse, that the person they were with was more committed and in love with the role that they played as opposed to the heart that they had. And I don't know how many of y'all have ever been in a, a real relationship, especially if a part of your change is involved making more money. Ladies, y'all let me know if I'm wrong. But you in a relationship with a man, he's the breadwinner. Like she says, she was in college at the time they got married. Common sense says that this man was the breadwinner. So you with your man, he's the breadwinner. You start making more money, maybe even more money than him. He didn't stay the same. What started to show up in that man? Y'all let me know down in the comments. My guess is insecurities. And one way to make a very unhealthy, toxic, combative situation is to combine one man who has a lot of insecurities and another woman who refuses to fold to him. And then let's just look at if she did what a lot of people are saying she should have did because marriage is for better or worse, thick or thin, make it work no matter what. She should have never got married, which she, by the way, did say she shouldn't have gotten married. But nonetheless, if she just followed that alternative and when she got to the point where she had this business and this degree, she said, instead of choosing this version of me, I'm becoming, I'm going to choose this relationship. What do you think would have happened to that desire in her heart that motivated her to get the degree and the business to begin with? You ain't got to be no relationship or marriage expert to answer this question. It wasn't going to go away because energy can be neither created nor destroyed, but simply transferred, right? So it would have changed form into what? Stress. She would have remained in that relationship saying, I'm not going to become my best self. I'm not going to pursue this business, all this investment, all of these things I, I realize I can do and I want to do. Instead of that, I'm going to stay in this marriage or this relationship and everything she would have been doing would have had an undertone of stress. Everything she would have been doing as a wife, if she kept doing the same things, would have been begrudging. The sex, the cooking, the cleaning, even being a mother, taking care of herself. And then what would have happened? She would have been with a man that said, hey, I'm not really sure if this is the wife that I signed up for. You don't look the same. Your weight going up and down. You ain't got the same attitude. You're not as kind. You're not as agreeable. You're always combative and finding something to pick about or whatever, whatever which we all know, again, is motivated by stress, and he would have been the one to chuck the deuces. Either that or she would have suffered the same fate as a lot of our great-grandmothers who didn't even have the opportunity to fulfill their purpose and leave a legacy and start a business and do all of these different things, li like literally didn't have the opportunity to, and we see the erosion on them on a spiritual level, that they live unhappily ever after, miserable, but 
Gotta stay married because we don't want people on Twitter to talk bad about us for leaving a relationship that's no longer serving us. Now, in no way am I advocating for jumping ship if you get uncomfortable in your relationship. If you got a marriage or relationship that can be salvaged, you know, that can be worked on, repaired, restored, if y'all can heal, please do that. But if you're in a situation where you have to choose between the relationship that you're in and your authentic self and you don't choose yourself, you're going to lose yourself. And some of y'all in relationships right now with a person that if you continue being in that relationship or dating them, then you're going to lose yourself. Matter of fact, there are five ways to know for sure that you're going to lose yourself if you continue dating the person that you're currently entertaining. I talked about that in my book, Don't Forget Your Crown. I broke it all the way down, so I'm not going to go in here. If you have not yet gotten that book, Don't Forget Your Crown, which is my bestseller, by the way, I'm making it 50% off for this weekend only at the link in the caption or in the bio, wherever you see it. So click that now. But so you can get a hold of it, depending on whenever you see this video. But moral of the story is this. We don't know what's going on in them folks' house, so I'm not here to hate her or the husband or anything like that. I wish them both the best. But if she got to a point in that relationship where that man could no longer support her growth or anything like that, the only alternative would be for them to beat each other up and to grow apart because one of them wasn't growing. And if you ever get into a situation where... You're going to end up growing apart from a person because they're not growing with you. It's better to go ahead and grow apart from them than to grow apart from your authentic self trying to force yourself to save a relationship that you probably shouldn't have started in the first place. But those are just my thoughts. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Share this if you got any value from it. And again, if you have not yet gotten my book, Don't Forget Your Crown, now is the time to get it. 50% off, instantly download it to your phone at the link in the caption or in the bio whenever you back out. I'll let y'all let y'all be good. Peace.